Hello everyone and welcome to another pick a card reading. For today's subject we have a quite a specific theme, this upcoming new moon in the sign of Sagittarius. Why? Because new moon is we create something and Sagittarius, well it has no limits. We can dream as big as we want. So, you know, there are celestial energies and karmic imprints, so to speak, which sometimes do not favor tarot and to play with you no know, energies. There are others, for example, this Sagittarian New Moon, which actually invites us to do that, to alchemize, to bring out the more optimistic and positive, dreamy, hopeful side of everything possible and even impossible. So, inspiration works really, really good with Sagittarius energy. So then, for today, I would just like to ask for inspiration for this Sagitt upcoming Sagittarius new moon on the 23rd or 24th of November, depending on where you are on the planet. So, this is where we choose from three decks, rather than anything else. So, we have this one. We have this one. And we have this one. So, if you haven't made your choice yet, you can just pause. And allow your intuition to kick in when we have the three decks of cards, one next to each other. But for now, I am going to begin with the first pile. So everyone who was attracted to this tarot deck. It says the Golden Dawn Tarot, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest. It's not the title by which you should choose, just, you know... Maybe the artwork, what vibe, inspiration it gives you. So let us see what inspiration, perhaps what motivation, guidance is there for everyone who is attracted to the first. Five of Wands reversed. <clears throat> the Emperor. Seven of a Swords reversed. And Seven of Cups reversed. This is... Yeah, quite inspirational. Because this already has a very strong motivational message attached to it. And I'm going to get into the details in just a few moments. But I would just like another card or two. For, you know, extra clarifiers. Or is this it? No, we have this. Six of Wands reversed, King of Wands reversed, hmm. Just want more and here it is. The Knight of Nine, Nine of Coins reversed. So the message here is that, you know, you have had a very, very long and tiresome symbolic battle. Now that battle, the Five of Wands, of course, can be interpreted as a powerful, a karmic exam in life, a real exam in life, a challenge, a continuous challenge over a, at least five years, prolonged period of time, which you had to overcome daily. It can be interpreted as, you know, um, 
launching your own business, project, or life change. Something that felt like, you know, a tough battle where the opponents might not really be other people, but life, a situation, sometimes karma, sometimes the self, sometimes inner reality battling outer reality, hope battling despair, you know. This battle took many shapes and forms, you know, over the course of the years. <clears throat> but it's reversed. So this is where the challenging, the competition, the essence of it, of what the battle was, is gone. So it no longer feels like a challenge. Even if it's ongoing, it is just there, but you're not averse, you're not uh, in involved in soul, so to speak. But chances are, for many people, whatever that battle, whatever this represents, this five of uh, ones, because absolutely, for some people, it can mean tough situation, conflicts or challenges with the family, with other people, partners, children, you know, in a professional world. So this can translate to a lot of different types of battles, but this is where it... Even if the battle is not won, even if the war is not, whatever this is, it no longer feels like the continuous challenge. But we have the seven and... Eight, no, seven of swords and seven of cups reversed. So this is where the seven of swords reversed. You're free. This is freedom. You're no longer chasing an illusion. You're not no longer chasing an ideal. You kind of see things very, very, very much for what they truly are. The seven of cups represents that maybe you feel that you don't have all that many choices or there is no right or wrong decision, choice, preference, even worldview, or even an attitude, an emotional mm, page of wisdom that you draw from life, let's say. Wisdom that is only susceptible to emotional intelligence, if that, that's what I'm trying to say here. Perhaps you find yourself a little bit lost that sometimes the choices that we have to choose from pretty much lead to the same goal, to the same path, to the same result. So how much wisdom can there be when the only truth available and even possible is just a subjective one. For example, how much can the divine help us to tell us our own preferences? It cannot. That is what we have to develop or generate. That is something the divine spheres cannot truly necessarily help us with. Because it's so earthly, it is so subjective, it depends on so much on one's inner playfulness, if nothing else, that it's just our, that is all, something only either us or someone very similar to us, like a living person, can help us with. So perhaps you might be feeling, yes, you are free, you know your truth, you see others even society, even basically everything for what it truly is. So you're, do not, you do not feel in a way uncertain in your perceptions of external reality, whatever this is. Your position in society, circle of friends, pe generally speaking people, the times that we're living in, the how society is functioning right now. So this can be any type of freedom where all of that is no longer a source of illusion because you see through it. Of course, this means that 
you had a lot of cord cutting in the past seven years, you know, in this battle and challenge or whatever this was, you fought pretty much alone, because cord cutting, some friends were worse than enemies, if that makes sense, so yes. And right now, yes, you see that pretty objectively, yet you also see the inner world where what should you choose or what is your biggest dream? What is your biggest goal? What from all of this, your dream world, your aspirations, your Sagittarian energies, basically, would you like to bring to the table right now? Because no one else, especially karmic forces or even inner forces, can't decide in your place. Because the unconscious can very much decide, but it flips a coin. It doesn't follow any ration, so better you decide. And these cards, you know, the Six of Wands reversed. The Six of Wands reversed follows the Five of Wands. So, five and six. And this is usually the card of triumph, accomplishment, the truth of the heart burning brightly, a sensation of victory in that sense, a glorified and elevated feeling, and then reversed. Well, it's not quite there, but neither is the challenge, if you know what I mean. The flames of passion finally, I'm not saying died, but they tempered themselves to a tolerable, so you kind of see things in your life, and especially in your inner world, and feel them for what they truly are in the right measure, because this in this fire energy, the one, six and five of wands, and the king of wands himself, and reversed means irritation, so reversed means bottled up fire, now, if the bottled up fire, the rage, the frustration, perhaps you've been through a depression, you've been through a very powerful reset moment. Now, that kind of triggered the inner flames to burn with anger. Maybe that was the cause of depression. But since everything fiery tempered itself, you know, the nine of coins reversed. This is where you finally see, you know, everything that the divine or anything or anyone else cannot give you, do for you, help you with. There are certain feelings in one's heart, even mind, even the senses, Torian energy, the five senses, that only one can provide for the self. As in, let me give you a very absurd example. What is someone's favorite food? Now, someone who really don't, doesn't care and is not passionate about the culinary dimension would have, even if they would give a very quick and certain answer, that answer would be somewhat, nine of coins reversed, invalid. Because... They didn't experience enough out of disconnect from that dimension. They just didn't have that sense in order to explore their true joys and delights in culinary senses. So this and but when someone very, very sophisticated and let's say blessed with the Torian dimension, the culinary dimension who has really advanced tastes, you will ask the same question, well, they will have trouble answering because there is a, a multitude of, you know, experiences to choose from. So this is where there are some things that only we can generate for ourselves and maybe that is what you were missing until now, because the main card here, the only major arcana, is the Emperor, Ares. So, exactly as this card suggests, live it. Dream big. The 
The emperor tempered the fires. The emperor is already victorious. It doesn't need anything just to make up his mind and set out there and, and live. So this encourages you that, okay, you accomplished so much, but right now you might be feeling you don't even know what you want really. But that's a good thing. Because when you got to that point where, oh, you don't even know what you want, that means that you're heading in the right direction. Because the options don't matter as much, because karmically, for you going towards the future, you know that you're safe already. Because then when, when one's being allows itself to, you know, be so capricious, to be lost in options, in carelessness. You might want to, and if you want to force your inner world to, oh, this isn't like me. I have to know what I love or what I want or what my dreams are. or But don't do it in an aggressive way, you know, as the emperor reversed would. Do it in a try, play with ideas. If you don't know, it's fine. Why? Because that gives you a different kind of freedom to dream, to stay at the drawing board, to be in a way stagnant, but to enjoy it, for that to be fun, for that to be a new adventure every day, to discover your dreams. Or from the multitude of dreams or the complexity of your the being of who you are, to choose something. So this is creational. You birth something. But in order for you to get there, you need this emperor attitude to just believe in yourself, to just dream big, even in ignorance and unknowing, even if you don't know exactly specifically what your dream is, you still know what would be suitable, the feeling, the overall, you know, um, perhaps frequency is the best word, or the overall, you know, feeling of your future, of your, of what you deserve, basically, of what you need in your life. You don't need to know the specific because you can just know what you all what you deserve. And that means it cannot go wrong. Because, don't get me wrong, this isn't like a anointment to the ego. Because the emperor can handle everything negative that he deserves. All of us are you know, living beings, so we, we make mistakes, we hurt each other, we break the laws of the universe, we get in everyone else's and the divine's way unwillingly. So of course all of us will have to face consequences and we do each and every day, each and every second. But the emperor, not that he's not afraid of that, he loves that, he learns from that, he becomes stronger every day. So that attitude to embrace the unknown because you know what you deserve and you know that you can handle everything that the universe dishes to you. And amongst that, the predominant, of course, there are going to be good experiences because you're in the creational phase of your life. So, dream big, even if, you know, the future is totally uncertain, even if you don't know what you're dreaming, but know what you deserve, and that's more than enough. And I would just like to choose an oracle card. New experiences and possibilities. Exactly. Embrace the new unknown. Embrace the serendipitous unknown. Let the divine surprise you. Anticipate the feeling of satisfaction, the feeling of the emperor being found, being supported, being okay, in peace, in, and I'm pointing to this, in peace, in serenity, you know, this is what, you know, the guides wish to share with everyone who has chosen this deck. So I do hope that this helped. Thank you so very much for listening. 
and until next time, bye for now. So, hello everyone who has chosen the second deck, which was this one, I hope I remember correctly. So let's get a little bit of inspiration for this Sagittarius New Moon. And again, I would like to mention that it's on the 23rd or 24th of November, depending on where you are on the planet. And if you're into astrology, it's approximately 1 degree and 20 or 30 minutes of the sign of Sagittarius, so that's quite symbolic numerologically. There's new, no better new beginning and initiative and, and you know, period of action than one. And one is about the individual or the union of two and two become one. Anyway, let's see what the cards would Six of Wands. The Princess of Pentacles and Princess of Swords, but... To be totally honest, I would not like to use them, because they're such minor energy. What they say is that we must make sure that the rational mind which wants to know every little detail not to defeat the philosophical mind, the true faith. We have the devil. We have the six of pentacles. The strength. Sun, Ace of Swords, hmm. Five of Cups reversed. This is pretty interesting because what to me, what this says to me, sorry, is that well, these are like too good to be true in that sense. Six of Wands. So this is a period of accomplishment for you. A period when either karmically, emotionally, let's say, psychologically, inner work-wise, or any other kind of work-wise, career-wise, whatever it is that you invested your energy, intention, focus into, well, we're in a period where that is paying off. Where that, and not necessarily materially, as in things are happening. You are getting somewhere. It's a period of results. And sometimes that result is communication, um, the words, the feedback, the whatever of other people. Uh, it can be, of course, financial, contractual, anything that has to do with projects. And, you know, where, when... Someone needs to, you know, achieve something. And this is the period when work, because don't get me wrong, this is not something where you sit back and the results of your work just come in. No, no, no. This is where you're still into it strongly, but you're doing it. So it's working, you're achieving, you're divinely getting prepared to go and do something. And this is quite real. This is, I would say, this is not just a symbolic, spiritual, or psychological energy. This is something quite real. The devil, six of pentacles. So you're gifted with an opportunity manifestation of something. Power over something. Money, position, chance, option. Someone enables something for you. An influence. And strength, so you really, really need to use it. Whatever this opportunity is, you need to use it. And the sun, well, for some people, this is like a confirmation that 
not just that it will make you happy in a classical sense, you need to be doing it, you know. It's for you, it's meant for you. Well, for others, this means, well, if you wanted your creativity to support you, and again, I must say, not for not everyone is this strictly money or material. But anyway, if you wanted your creativity to support and you wished for this, well, here it is. So it's a creational cycle even. Perhaps the very first stages, the very first size or breasts of a creational cycle, where, as I said, creation is starting to take place and appear in your life, in any forms, from a cooking book to, as you got, as you got, you know, for a gift, or on YouTube videos, I don't know, the cre creative videos, you know, the universe just sending you creative impulses in your life. But the Ace of Swords represents like a proper something, like either a chance or like real deal. Because these cards are kind of that is what, what they're suggesting. Real, It's real deal. It's not symbolic. But that means the responsibility and then when it's at your door or whatever, you actually have to go and do it because there's no turning back. And not because anything bad would happen, but you would be fo a fool to. And that is said by the Five of Cups reverse because you will definitely not be disappointed. Because, don't get me wrong, this is a rather playful energy. Because it did happen in the past where something similar was a big disappointment, so of course, you're careful, but no, when you, you know when something, as I said, is supporting you. You know when on, you're on the right path, you know when you're doing it, you know when things need to get in a certain way to support you, even if you don't have that much control over it. But chances are this Ace of Swords is actually saying that that which you do not have control over right now will change in the sense that control will be given to you. May that be an area of life or anything, you know, of thought, where you can actually have the steering wheel of things and, you know, creational energy. For some people, this can even mean a child, a pet, as a symbol of your well-being, as a symbol of finally... I'm doing it, finally I'm in the right track, finally I'm I'm just okay, but at least I'm okay, you know. It will be a symbol of, as I said, the creational cycle of your life. When things are meant to come together, to form, to meet, to create, you know. So yeah. And I would also like to uh, get an oracle card. Inner truth, higher ground, bountiful harvest. So yeah, exactly. What this is telling me that you need to get to higher ground. Maybe that's why a lot of things which didn't depend on you and you weren't under your control... That's why the universe kind of blocked you from having control, because it needed to push you to a higher ground before anything else. And you push someone onto a higher ground, first in soul and spirit, and then in any other more palpable way. And, you know, inner truth. So, exactly... In order for the Six of Wands to be operational, with the devil, of course, because reality is supporting you, something is supporting you, something is working. In order for you to get here, you needed to truly get to know yourself. And for the, the hardest lessons were everything that is not you and you thought was you. A massive inner purge, truth purge. And because you kind of, it became so obvious all that isn't you, the devil, 
all that just held you in shackle but wasn't you. It freed you when you realized that it wasn't. And if there are a lot of things which you have not yet discovered about yourself, that's just creational process. The most important part you already done, you know what doesn't resonate, what isn't you, what you cannot accept. And that negative inner truth many times is more valuable than the other, especially in times when it does matter what we choose, because there's no going back. And higher ground. And this image, I do believe, is very, very symbolic because isn't one's being exactly like a delicate rose? It needs the right altitude, so to speak. It needs the right conditions to show its true beauty. And its true beauty cannot be appreciated by anyone. Another meaning of the higher ground, because the eye of the beholder needs to be seeking the beauty and gentleness and etc etc as in for some person for one person a beautiful flower might be a testament of how ingenious the divine is while for other it is cash as in i'll sell it for so much the beauty never even was observed a second and of course, you know which type of person you are. But the thing is that you also need to know much more than anyone else that you are, a, that your eyes do seek beauty, do seek higher ground, and your inner truth is full of beauty. And if that, those are the seeds that will have stemmed from this rose, now you call the fruit of the rose. Like rose... Bud, or I don't know. But you get what I mean. That rose, whatever comes from the plant, the fruit of the rose. Uh, I know it actually, but I have a lapsus, so it bugs me so much. Well, rose hip, that's it. So imagine that those tiny seeds within it are the bountiful harvest and you can make so many good stuff from rose hips because it's delicious even. So that is the and no other plant has that insane amount of concentration of natural vitamin C. So you can imagine the meaning of bountiful harvest for you, vitamins, the, the, the nutrients in spirit. You can imagine that they will have to show up in physical reality or emotion in, or in whatever helpful, truly and vitally helpful way. Well, again, the six of coins is also a card representing a kind of harvest, donation, giving, support, you know, generosity, moon and Taurus. One sharing the harvest, if you know what I mean. And the devil, well, it can always be seen as the card of manifestation. But without the chains. And the sun, well, the sun is ultimately always, always a creation of energy. And your story, your personality, your even ego, but in the best possible sense because that infinite creational energy within you even if it's artistic it does need a name and a story to it so you won't be disappointed dare to receive what the universe will give you very soon so thank you everyone who has chosen this pile and until next time bye for now hello everyone who have chosen the last pile So I would just like to mention again that the new moon is on around the 23rd, 24th of November 22. 
and it takes place at around 1 degree 20 minutes or 30 minutes of Sagittarius. The Ten of Swords Reversed. Wow. Well, that's not the most pleasant beginning. Mm, I'm not sure if I should keep this. Because this isn't actually a tarot card. And, you know, a lot of tarot decks have a, a card depicting the Tree of Life. But I'm not sure if... As in, some readers include it in their deck and they use it, others don't really. I'm not sure what it was doing in mine, because I never keep it in well, anyway, since it's here. It, here. This just got really interesting. Well, whoever chose the third deck or, yeah, well, you kind of have to be highly spiritual or into deep spirituality because I don't think in any other way this will make sense to you. So perhaps if you are not very immersed into spirituality and spiritual practices and esoteric knowledge, Maybe this might not necessarily be the reading for you unless, you know, you suffered a massive loss once in your life and that somehow is returned as a divine truth revealed to why and how, but then that's it. P but for everyone else who is very deeply immersed into the world of... What was I saying? Justice. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Justice. Mat. Where, you know, the heart kind of has to weigh either as much or lighter than a feather or there is big trouble. <laughs> Page of Swords. Well, this is insignificant, so... Five of Swords. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we had the High Priest Reverse. Six of Swords and Five of Swords reversed. Or mm, upright, sorry. Five of Swords upright. Well, so based on the premise that we're deeply spiritual people, as in the re everyone who is remaining to listen to this, well, the Tree of Life and the Ten of Swords reversed is quite symbolic because there is a powerful, powerful, powerful manifestation blocked between the worlds. It's almost down to Malkut, or how you pronounce that, to the Telluric Sphere. It's almost in this reality, but and it, it, it took a long way to get here. A lot of energy, a lot of manifestation, or a lot, whatever. But the ten of you might think that it's it's already lost or it's already manifested, and maybe it's absolutely true, as in a small uh, 
mm, element of it, or like you know, and this is such a not ideal example, but you know that bottom lurker fish. I'm not exactly sure how you call it, which has like a lure which glows attached to his head, and of course natural. Total in nature design and it glows and it's a deep bottom fish and it, it's kind of ugly ish. It's cute but ugly. <laughs> so that's just the lure. What we see, whatever manifested in your life was just the lure. That faint glow. Of course, you were impressed and you might have thought that's full manifestation. But no, 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 no. The ace of coins, ten of coins, the beginning and the end. The full completion of it. This is when it's. How should I say? It's truly just a material seed. A material seed, as in something that starts the descent into the material world. For example, one's word, one's small gesture, one's. That five minutes of brainstorming in the shower when you get the eureka. All of that is on one hand physical because it you live it and it does kick start the chain so those moments of the, the beginning of the beginning but now it's between the two between even that says between the two it's in balance the end and the beginning and you know the high priest reversed how should I even explain this? You moved on in a way that you thought it's done, karma's closed, case closed, it is what it is. And whatever manifestation it was, how should I explain this? It didn't it did not impact your life, your soul, your inner world as much as it was supposed to. But you have no idea of this because it impacted you. So you thought that it, it it is what it is, okay. But no, you don't see what's coming. And that's the essence of and the Ten of Swords and the High Priest reversed. That it's not over yet. It's not done yet. There's still more to come through. Just that... You know, the reason why mentally you're not there is because you would sabotage it. So you feel a bit disconnected or that's why you even are almost encouraged by your inner forces to have this feeling of case closed because that is the best possible thing you could do in anticipation of whatever this is, a powerful manifestation. Because if you're not into spirituality, I'm not sure whatever this is can manifest in your life. Because you need to know a lot and you, have, you need to have done a lot. A big... Ooh. Best. Either the work in, in any way, sense, and in any exception, because you're a spiritualist, so. Work of the three years, past three years, in, to the present, even when you're listening to this, to the very, very present, or the imminent um, form of main of an alliance of three or three a friendship of three or something with three you and two other people you other two souls you and a couple i don't know you and three and yeah so that's what you could never ever await coming how the story continues Maybe this beginning and the end don't even matter as much. Because now the chapter is turning. And because the chapter is turning, 
this will be resolved divinely. Divine justice has to be at play. Even before I drew all of these cards, what did I say? If you're not necessarily into deeper parts of spirituality, it can just be an old... something that you deemed lost or resolved, even though it was resolved in an unjust way. Divine justice comes back. Let me just choose a few oracle cards for your group as well. Maybe there is some wisdom and guidance in there. Well, I'm not gonna <laughs> accept these because these belong to the previous group. So let me just shuffle a little, a little bit. Higher ground that belonged to the previous group as well. So you see, when it wants to come out, <coughs> make a decision. So make a decision standing from higher ground. No, I think this refers to the past. You got, you needed to get onto a higher ground to make a decision intuitively for your intuition, your inner world, your instincts, your being to guide you to onto the right choices and decisions. No, maybe in the past two years. But can we get at least a hint of what might... Uh, might be coming down for you guys even though with this deck contemplation so something that you contemplated so this to me says since you are into deep spirituality, you were guided a certain way. You executed what the guidance that you received just from your own sources, not as in another person, through another person. Just what whatever forces your forces are, they guided you personally and you followed it and it led you somewhere, but not necessarily where you thought they kind of promised you. Not that you were misled, not that it didn't work out and it didn't happen the way it should have, but not necessarily the full picture. There are a lot, there is a lot missing. And that is, which is missing, that's what you think that, oh yeah, it's done, it, well, you know, you can't expect a manifestation to meet someone's expectation, it would be even ridiculous, but this is it, at least something will meet your expectation, what you had back then, maybe two years ago, four years ago, but in a almost shocking way, it will be exactly down to very specifics, meet your expectations, if you know what I mean. Impossibly. Even the Im imperfections within, within it will be due to your own expectations, if you know what I mean. So something, your, the universe is kind of showing you th through this how incredibly precise it can be. Like that it's not what... Maybe you... Versus are someone who kind of looks at the universe in a very frequency way. If I match the frequency and the universe is, after all, not one of us. 
you might be surprised that it can very well adapt a very very close and personal attitude if this even is an acceptable term it can mimic us so very much so yeah it will show you a side of its divine personality that you would not expect so i do hope that this was useful or helpful thank you everyone for listening and let's all besides our own hopes and dream uh, set a common seed of intention a dream a hope for the futures that all of us would like to experience collectively to have hopes not just for the selves but also for each other so thank you everyone i hope you enjoyed this and until next time bye for now